fourth son. She says, no, but this is a, he is a, a remarkable horse, Red Keto, isn't he? I know. Well, last year we were kind of ruling him out because he was an eight-year-old. The trainer was saying he's almost in a Zimmer frame. He had a wide barrier, <laughs> plenty of weight. And then look at him. He came second at $61. So you cannot rule him out. And uh, the further away he, go he goes from England from his base, he seems to get better. And his work at Werribee has been really good. Um, so, I, yeah, you've got to give him a chance. Sometimes when we say here you've been given a haircut, it's not a compliment. But this is OK. I mean, <laughs> Red, Red Keto is getting a nice haircut from Robin Trim. Yeah, Jones, they, so he's just clipping him there because uh, if they're because our English horses are, are thinking they're going into winter, so they're just growing a bit of a coat there. Which on race day, if, the, if it's a hot day, yeah, they'll get a bit too hot if they start sweating. And uh, I think he's um, Ed Dunlop said he wished he'd almost clipped him a bit later because he's starting to grow his winter coat again. <laughs> Speaking of Ed Dunlop, we spoke to him after the barrier draw, and um, he says that this horse is capable of just about anything. He's a big favourite, not a bit of a favourite. He's a big favourite with a lot of people. He's an absolute legend. And uh, I think for me, it would be my greatest day in racing. Um, we've won some big races, but to have a horse come from Europe to run four Melbourne Cups in a row, I'd like to see another horse do it. <laughs> no, he's right. Top six chance or not? Yes, I definitely think he is. He's proven at Flemington. He's drawn out for him to uh, balance up and create his own galloping room. I agree. It's, yep. This is his race. He loves it. Definitely. Chance. Top six. Yeah, top, definitely. Top, top six, OK. Top three, I'd say. OK. Yeah. OK, <laughs> okay. In, in, in the place get as well. That, that's confidence, a nine-year-old. <laughs> but um, OTI, we're going to talk about those four in just a moment. The challenges are coming. Dunedin trying to away, find a way through. I got told that he grinds it out doesn't really have much of a turn of foot and uh, I rode him accordingly. Once I sort of straightened up, I, I got on my bike and got him going. Here's Red Cano starting to flash home on the outside now. I just got in the front too soon on him. He lost concentration and he rolled around a little bit and um, Dunedin had that bit softer run and was able to sort of come through on the inside. Dunedin is coming home. Just waiting, I think it was five minutes or whatever around the back. It was um, it was a real strange feeling. I was by myself. I was probably the last person to find out my result. I was looking over at Letsy and uh, I heard the crowd go up. There was a massive roar. Is that a gap just in between? Now they've gone for Dunedin. Red Cordeaux was really painful to go so close. I reckon if I'd ridden the horse before, I would have won the race. It was a great thrill to run second on a horse that wasn't really expected to run that well. It still hurts me to the, today whenever I think about it. It's very good inspiration to, to get up and get, get going in the morning and to go out and work a bit harder because, you know, I, I definitely want another cup.